I haven't been shot with one of these in about 25 years, so. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Hello, I'm Arcady, and welcome back to Running With Scissors. Today, I'm gonna to be covering one of my favorite parts of cosplay crafting, which is prop painting, or more specifically, repainting pre-made props. I'm gonna be demonstrating on a Nerf gun, but this tutorial will work for any other kind of weapon, toy, or prop too. This is a repaint, these are a repaint, the base of the shoe is a repaint. You can repaint anything. Because there's no rule in cosplay that says you have to make 100% of your costume by yourself from scratch. Sometimes you do just want to repaint a Nerf gun and be done with it in a day and a half. Modifying a pre-made prop is a great option if you've run out of time to finish building your own before a convention, want to focus solely on your paint job, or if you just didn't feel like building one yourself. You don't have to justify your crafting choices to anyone. So whatever your reason or your prop, I'm going to walk you through how to do a quick, good-looking paint job. You don't want to go into modifying a prop aimlessly because it's easy to lose track of what you wanted to do with it about halfway through, especially once we cover up all the fun neon colors with a solid coat of paint. So you want to do a little bit of planning before you even touch it. If you're replicating a prop from a video game or movie, you're going to want to pull up a whole bunch of reference photos right off the bat. Reference photos are one of cosplayers' greatest tools, so you're going to use them as guidance through the entire process. Since your pre-made prop is probably not an exact match for your references, our goal here is not a perfect replica. Our goal here is to copy as much as you can to get the overall style and feel of the prop instead. We're going for quick, done, and good looking, not screen accurate. I promise you that no one is going to look closely enough at your finished prop to give you crap about it not being a perfect one-for-one -one copy. And on the off chance that someone does, they're definitely the kind of person who's elitist and hates fun, and their opinion doesn't matter anyways. The first thing I do to plan out my paint job is to take a bunch of before photos while I figure out my new color placement. The photos give me something to reference back to if I forget all that I wanted to change while I'm in the middle of painting. This also gives me pictures for before and after comparisons to show off my work once I'm done. We're going to plan out three types of small modifications. What raised bits to remove, what indented parts to fill in, and what things that we can add. We're focusing on small, fast changes that don't require power tools or a bunch of hard to find supplies. Everything we're using can be found at your local craft store or hardware store. To start, you're going to identify any raised writing or markings on your prop that you don't want. If you're modifying a Nerf gun like I am, you're absolutely going to have some raised bits that you'll want to get rid of. To remove these raised parts, grab a large metal file and start whittling them down. It definitely takes some time and muscle, but the plastic isn't a match for a tough metal file. It took me about five minutes to remove each one of these sections, but they do completely disappear with some effort, so just keep working at it. Once the plastic has been filed down and you can't feel it anymore, you can go over it with some finer grit sandpaper to smooth it out. If you don't want to put all that energy into filing these bits down, there is a quicker, easier way to get rid of these raised sections. Just glue some foam over top of it. Cut a small piece of 2mm or 4mm craft foam into the shape you need to cover it, and then hot glue it down right over top. I know that seems way too simple and like it would stand out on the finished piece, but once the gun is painted, it blends in really well. It looks great at photo distance, and you probably wouldn't have even noticed it on my finished prop if I hadn't pointed it out. The key to making it blend in is cutting it into a shape that feels like a natural fit with the rest of the prop, and then a good paint job over top. So if you're on a serious time crunch, just hot glue some foam on. There is no shame in hot gluing. Next up, we're going to tackle the indented text. The best way to do this is with bathroom chalk, which you can find in most hardware stores. It's very flexible and is sandable when dry, so it's perfect to use as a filler. You apply it into the areas you want filled, make sure it gets completely into the crevices, blend the edges out, and then let it dry. Once it's fully dry, you can sand it smooth. The downside to the chalk is that it does have a fairly long drying time, so it's not ideal in a time crunch. You can also use wood glue or wood filler from your hardware store in the exact same way. I find those a little bit messier to use than the chalk, but they do work well too and sometimes have shorter drying times. The last small modification I do is seeing if there are any tiny bits I want to add to the prop. For example, this gun has some really nice sculpted in rivets, but they're not as prominent as I'd like them to be. So to make them stand out more, I'm going to hot glue some googly eyes over top of them. Googly eyes are the single best thing you can use for fake rivets on armor and props because they're always perfectly round and uniform in size. Also, I kind of just really love knowing that my prop is secretly covered in googly eyes and sometimes if you shake it, you can hear them rattling around. I also don't love how flat the back piece of my Nerf gun is. It just looks a little bit plain. So I'm going to cut a foam dowel and hot glue a couple pieces down to it just to give it a little more interesting shape. And I'm going to add a strip of 2mm foam across here because I don't love all these holes. 
Basically, any part you don't like the look of, stick some foam over top of it. It's a really easy way to adjust the shape of your prop slightly to make it a little more visually interesting and make yourself happier. Once you're happy with all the adjustments you've made, you do have one more step you need to do before moving on to adding color to your prop. If you're modifying a Nerf gun or another type of toy that shoots things, all of these moving parts are not gonna fly at a convention. Most conventions have very strict weapons policies that disallow any type of projectiles, for obvious reasons. Ow! Some conventions also require that your weapons have an obvious neon orange tip to mark them as fake. Always double check with your convention's policies and rules to make sure that your prop falls within their guidelines. It may seem annoying to have to leave a neon tip on your gun or bring it through weapons check, but being able to carry a prop weapon to a convention is actually both a safety issue and a privilege, so don't try to skirt your convention's rules. If in doubt, just leave your prop weapon at home and save it for outside photo shoots. So to make this con safe, we're going to disable every part of it that moves. On this particular prop, that means the trigger, the slide, and the cylinder. And we're going to do that simply by gunking up the mechanisms with epoxy. To do that, we're going to take some quick drying five minute epoxy and jam it into the mechanisms right where they meet. Your goal is to fuse a movable piece to a non-movable part so that it can't function anymore. Epoxy is very sticky, so I recommend wearing gloves while using it and applying it with either a Q-tip or piece of scrap foam. Once the epoxy has fully dried, you'll have a prop that's completely disabled and should be acceptable at most conventions. Once again though, double check your convention specific weapons policy. Every con is a little different and has their own set of rules, so you'll want to know what they are now and not when you walk in their doors. The next step up is priming your prop. I'm going to be priming with Plastidip because I want the texture of my gun to be a little more matte than metallic, but you can use whatever materials and process you prefer. If you aren't quite sure where to start with priming, you can check out my last tutorial where I walk you through how to prime with both Mod Podge and Plastidip. Here's your crash course in priming with Plastidip though. Gently warm up your can by placing it in a bowl of warm water for 10 minutes. Shake it then for a full minute. Put on your respirator and gloves and go outside to a well-ventilated area. Spray it evenly across your prop and let it dry for 15 minutes before applying a second coat. Then leave it outside to fully cure for 24 hours. Once it's dry, you'll have a smooth, uniform surface to paint on top of. After my Plasti Dip has set, I spray on my base layer of paint. I want my initial color to be silver, so I'm using Montana Gold, which is an amazing brand for metallic spray paints. I do two coats of paint and then let it dry outside for several hours. I'm going to paint the rest by hand with acrylics. I'm using Basics and Jacquard. Basics is one of the cheapest brands you can get at any craft store and it works great. Jacquard is a little pricier and harder to find, but it has excellent color payoff and lasts. I usually order it online at the Dharma Trading Company. And I'm using whatever cheap brushes I found at my craft store. There's no such thing as the best brush, just use whatever fits the space you're working in and feels nice in your hands. I also have water to wash my brushes, paper towel to wipe off excess paint, and an old Tupperware lid as a palette because I'm very fancy. A good paint job is mostly layers and layers of careful buildup. In general, I paint in four parts, base color, shadow, highlight, and weathering. I occasionally bounce around between those layers as needed, but I do try to build up my painting in that order. Since this is a repaint and not a perfectly accurate replica build, the style and feel that I'm going for with my gun is one from the video game Borderlands. I want it to be a mix of metallics and fun color, have strong lines and contrast, and look like I could have picked it up out in the wasteland. To get that look, my color scheme is ultimately going to be silver and olive green, but I'm starting with a base undercolor of yellow. Underpainting is a really quick and easy way to add depth to a prop, so I'm placing yellow in the areas that I want to end up green. The yellow will warm up the green paint from below, and since I'm after a bit of a worn out style, bits of it will peek through the green and look weathered. I do several layers of the yellow to get full coverage. While those layers of yellow dry, I move on to the silver sections of the gun. Because I want the silver to be my base color on those parts, I'm moving straight to my first shadow color there. I'm using a dark metallic gray to gently paint shadows into the corners. I love high contrast on my props, so I always push my shadows into the corners and then carefully pull the color outwards to create gradation and the illusion of depth. The dark gray color is pretty subtle at first because I want to build up to darker shades rather than immediately slapping on something like black. It's always easier to add darker shading later than it is to try and knock it back lighter if you start it out too strong. Next up, I want a few light green sections to stand out against the darker green that the majority of the gun will end up being. I picked areas that are unique and would pop out like the cylinder and other raised sections. Then I start placing my olive green color over top of the yellow base. It's a very strong color, so I try to keep a steady hand and paint very deliberately. I also make sure to hit all the odd little underneath and hidden portions of the gun with this shade. 
You never know when a photograph will catch your prop at a strange angle and the underside is suddenly exposed, so it's good to get some color on these parts even if you swear you won't see them. The gun also has a few small areas that are really good for an accent color, so while the olive green is drying, I go to work on those. I picked purple because it's a good complementary color for green so it'll pop out a little bit. Once all my base layers are down, I fully shift to adding in shadows. Conventional artistic wisdom tells you not to shade with black. Luckily, I am not a conventionally trained artist, so I don't have to listen to that. I almost always shade with black. I like how much contrast it gives me, especially at a usual camera distance of three to six feet away. I personally tend to paint for that distance rather than close up because that's the distance my prop will most be viewed from. So I actually like the punchiness of black more than subtlety. A really good trick for learning to paint for that distance is to stand up and take your prop to a mirror and look at it there. It shifts your perspective away from staring at your prop so close up while you're working and helps you see things you might have otherwise missed. The way I pull off painting with black is by being very, very careful. I use the smallest brush, paint with the tip, and don't oversaturate my brush. I push thin lines into the deepest corners and try to keep a very steady hand. When I'm happy with my shadows, I move on to the highlights. If shadows go into corners, highlights go onto edges. On the olive green sections, I'm highlighting with my lighter green shade all around the edges. On the silver sections, I'm highlighting with a material called Rub and Buff. It is an ancient cosplay material that is actually still pretty amazing. It has high shine and is great to highlight already light silver with. A little goes a long way though, and it can ruin paintbrushes, so I apply it with a long Q-tip. My last painting stage is details and weathering. I'm hitting the purple sections with a pink tinged gloss that makes it a little neon and gives those areas more depth. I'm using an orangey copper to weather the barrels of the gun. Guns can discolor with use, so adding a contrasting color in these sections is a quick and easy detail that can make your prop more interesting. The copper color also really nicely contrasts with the green shades. Finally, I take some dark brown paint and a stiff brush and stipple some weathering onto various places. It's another quick way to age your prop and sneak more depth into the paint job. Weathering like this is also a really good way to hide any mistakes you may have made earlier. If something doesn't look right, just hide it with a bit of stippling and call it battle damage. I absolutely made a few mistakes in making this, and I'm not going to tell you where they are. I'm just going to stipple over them and call it battle damage, and you'll never know. You can hide all crafting sins with a clever paint job. Once you're done and you like the way it looks, your last step is to seal the prop so your paint doesn't chip off. I'm using Liquitex Satin Varnish Spray, but any other kind of spray on sealer like Mod Podge or Crystal Clear works too. The only thing to keep an eye out for is the finish. Some will make your prop matte, others will make it shiny, so make sure what you're using is the finish that you want before you spray it on. I do two coats of my sealer and then let it sit for several hours before handling. Once your last coat of sealer has dried, you have a brand new, bright and shiny, custom painted gun. All done in about a day and a half with supplies that you can find at your local craft store and local hardware store. And like I mentioned earlier, this tutorial will work for any kind of prop, not just guns. So you just need to follow the basic steps of modifying what you want to on it, priming it, and then painting it with a buildup of shadows, highlights, and weathering. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to us here at the Mercenaries of Mischief. I put out a new crafting tutorial every month, and we also have a bunch of other nerdy shows available on the channel too. You can also catch us playing D&D Live every Sunday, both here and over on our Twitch. One of the best ways to support us though is via our Patreon, and the link to that is in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you back here next time for more Running With Scissors.